independent. Okay. Okay. So platform independence in the sense means it can be. See here, you have done some some of two numbers program, for example. Okay. Okay. You have designed. So Chetan has designed some sum of two numbers function. That function will take some two arguments and return the sum of two numbers. So that okay. source code, whatever the code you have written, that is with you. But here, that is, for example, assume that you have written that code in Java. So what happens here when you compile that code? Bytecode will be generated on your machine. So simply, what I have to do, if I take that bytecode from you and execute on my machine, that can be executable without the source code. Okay. okay. Can you please okay. give me a minute? Yeah. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Right. Okay. So better I will share the screen for now. I'll explain that to you. So here what happens here, this is your Java code actually. Right. So when you do any code in the Java, so what I have to do first, there are two two phases, right? So what is the first phase here? You have to the code. compile the code. Okay, compile the code. Okay. You have to compile the code here. So after compilation, what is the output you will get here? Binary output. I said right, which is bytecode output. Yeah. Okay, it's a bytecode actually. So what is the importance of taking the bytecode here is this is the reason where, sorry, the spelling mistake. Okay, so what is the importance of taking the bytecode here is that since this bytecode is useful, something like it's a universal format, which you can define something as a, it's a universal format. Means any interpreter can understand this format. Okay. 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 Right. So after compiling the code, what you have to do here? So compilation is then the next phase is what? Here, interpretation. <coughs> the next phase is interpretation. So what is the importance of interpretation here? So whatever the compilation you have done, after compiling, this will be converted into the bytecode. This interpreter usually takes input as a bytecode. Okay. Okay, and it will compile the instruction step by step, and from the interpreter, you will get the required output. Okay. From here, you will get the required output here. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So okay. this is the generally what happens the phases while executing any programming languages. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So coming to the scripting languages, what happens in scripting languages? There is no phase of compilation. Okay, so complete this phase is not available. Okay. So entire this compilation phase is usually taken care of by the Python interpreter itself. Okay. 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 Do you got the difference, right? Yes. Sir. Okay. So but here, programming yeah. language is there, scripting language is there. So what is the difference here? Whenever you're executing or interacting with the programming language, the two phases are available. One is interpretation and compilation. So compilation, once it is done, it will generate the bytecode for you. After creating the bytecode, what it will do? The compilation usually take that in, input as a bytecode, and it will compile. It will interpret that and execute the output. But okay. whereas in Python, what happens? Directly the interpretation will taken. Okay, so interpreter will directly take care of this yeah. compilation along with the interpretation. Okay. As per the theory in Python, it says that it, it does not occur any compilation phase. There is no compilation phase. But when you're practically executing some class files, 
there you can observe this byte code. Okay. Okay. Is it clear for Chetan? Karun, are you clear? Yeah. Are you clear so far, right? Yeah. What happens here is that generally in Python, what they say is that there is no compilation phase in Python. But it usually occurs at the back end. But no need to take in care by the end user. Okay. Okay. And also you can observe those bytecode format. Generally, whenever you observe any file with .py extension, okay, mm -hmm. whenever you observe any .py extension, that file indicates it's a Python file. Python. On your system or wherever you observe with .py extension, that file tends to, it's a Python file. And coming to the, compile or whatever say, bytecode, right? So that bytecode should exist in the form of PYC. And now you observe the .pyc files, those are taken as a bytecode. This you can observe when you're interacting with the classes level, class level in Python. Okay. Clear so far? Yeah. Any doubts? No, no. Clear. Right? So you got the yeah. difference, right? What, I, what exactly the difference between the programming and scripting now? Yes. Yeah. Okay? Yes. Right. So here, you now you got the difference, no? Now what are the other things you have to learn here? Now you got what exactly the difference between the programming and scripting languages. Yeah. Now our intention is coming to the scripting languages, so what exactly this meant for? Right? Yeah. So coming to the scripting languages generally in the past 10 years back, they use some kind of Linux or bash scripting. They are available. Linux or Bash scripting is available. Using these, what they do, they used to automate some small jobs on the Linux servers mostly. Okay? So, for example, okay. do you have any idea on the Linux machines? Yeah. So, there is a cron, cron tab, right? What? Cron tab. So, you can, uh, something like you can schedule your events, whatever the functionality you want to do. Oh, I don't know about it. Okay. For example, tomorrow some Samba server is there, so you have to automate the process. Something like at tomorrow 11 o'clock, I have to start the Samba server. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So what okay. administrator has to do tomorrow? He has to suppose to go to the server and he has to switch on that manually. Mm -hmm. This is the process actually occurs in the pro in the form of manual way. So that makes the more trouble for the end user. He has to suppose to take care of everything. But user no need to go to that server and switch on. So in order to avoid the manual operation here, what I have to do is that I have to automate that process. So what I will do, using the cron tab, I can automate that. And else I can use the scripting languages for that point in time. Okay. okay. Using scripting languages, what I will do, I can automate the process of manual things to some extent at that point. Because these bash scripting or Linux scripting that does not support the oops completely. Okay? Okay. They does not support the oops actually. Means okay. they are not completely up to the programming level or complete on big complex level applications. You can't design using that. Okay. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. why later they came across with Perl. Okay. What okay. is Perl actually? This Perl is usually called as a text processing language. Right. Okay, so what exactly in 1990s generally they got a requirement, for example, most of the code at those point in time it has been designed using C. Uh -huh. So while they are coding the application using C, they got huge kind of logs. Those logs are with a high capacity of 10 GB or 20 GB or 5 GB or on. So it is having huge amount of the information within the file. So within that log file, I want to pass some activities, whether something my application is run successfully or not, what is the way actually the manual user is supposed to go to that log and check that particular string is available in that log or not. Okay? Okay. So by observing manually, what they, they, they can get some assurance that the application has run successfully by observing something, contents or exceptions in that logs. Okay. Okay? So using that process actually, for example, if you want to do that same log parsing using the C language or Java, it is very complex. The operation is very expensive. 
Okay. Okay. So in order to uh, avoid such kind of uh, something like complexity for the existing languages, okay, Larry Bell, the guy who invented the Perl, this guy has come across with a language called Perl. This Perl usually it is mostly for the text processing activities. Whenever you want to pass some activities from the log files, they prefer the Perl as one of the best choice there. Okay. Okay. So hmm. this is completely meant for uh, completely meant for whenever you got some requirement of log passing, they use Perl. And also, this Perl is a OOPS language. Means you can design some applications using that. Okay. But this is very bad in inheritance. Inherit not inheritance. It is very bad structure in OOPS. Means it is not following the other principles of OOPS. Okay. It supports the OOPS, but the OOPS structure in the Perl is very bad. Okay. Okay. Not following the exact standards of OOPS actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. So later on, they have come across with the Python. Okay. So this guy, something called Giardo Van Rusum, this guy has invented this Python. So what actually is that? He is one of the member in the C languages founder because then he is worked with Dennis Ritchie. He is the founder of C language. So that's, that is the reason he developed Python using the what C. So Python C. is completely built using the C. Okay, so most okay. of the library you will see the similarities between the functionalities in C and Python are most of similar. Okay. Okay, so coming to the Python, so here we got the history now. So what exactly now the importance is giving in the market? Why, what is the reason behind that? Okay? Got the history, right? Yeah. Now we will learn the importance of the language. Importance or we can say the it is the features of Python. Okay. Right? So coming to the importance, first one, what is the what is the thing or criteria which is making the Python huge usage in the market is first is it is easy to learn. Coming to my experience with the Python, any engineer with the basic things remains if you have any basic awareness of programming language, he can learn the Python in three to four days. That is more than enough. Okay. Because it's a scripting language, one of the reasons. That too, why easy to learn here is that the syntaxes are very easy. Okay? And generally, what are the piece of code or snippet of code you do that is in general English? Means at this instant, if I give some program to you, Python program to you, you're not sure about the Python actually. But we can get at least 40 to 50 percent of functionality from that, whatever the piece of code I have given that to you. Okay? Okay. To some extent, you can get the functionality because the thing here is that it is very easy to learn. Because, for example, if you go for any other programming languages, the first thing is that there will be a starting braces, there will be ending braces, right? Yeah. Which actually messes up the people there. So they don't know where exactly to start, where exactly to end, and the loop structuring also it is not very good in other languages when compared to the Python here. So it is very clear whenever you see there's some piece of code that gives the beautification so that user can take something from that piece of code at least. Okay? okay. So the syntactical wise and implementation wise it is very easy and it is also the, uh, what you say, for the initial learners who are want to turn to the programmers, this is the best choice for them to learn, to start their career with. Okay. Okay. okay? So we got the point easy to learn. Next is easy to implement. Okay, so what is it to implement here? So something like, for example, you are designing some application with a .NET or Java, right? Okay. The same application, if I am designing using Python, for example, Java takes thousand of thousand lines of code. The same kind of application you can design using Python within the span of hundred to two hundred lines. That is the okay. kind of flexibility it is provided by the Python actually. Oh, okay. Because you can reduce most of the code here. So what is the reason behind that? Because in Python, for doing anything, functions are already available. The only thing that's supposed to be done by the end user is just use that function. 
Okay. Karun, are you getting right? Yes, 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 sir. Okay, just don't hesitate. Okay, if you have any questions with respect to the personal whatever personal information with respect to the Python or something, just ask me. Don't hesitate at all. Okay. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Right. So here you got the two points. What is the importance? Is huge library. This should be the one of the reason for any language because without having the good library support, that does not give any importance in the market. Yeah. Because at that instant, for example, Chetan is working on the robotics, right? Yes. Yeah. So in the robotics, I don't know. I don't have the exposure to the robotics field platform. So here, if you want to do anything or any development activity using Python with respect to the robotics, you no need to do anything from the scratch level. So there are already certain functionalities are available. Yeah. So, for example, you have worked with the Python, right? So there are certain packages available for you to interact with the robotics, right? Yeah. Yes, you are import that and use that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Right. So what yeah. happens here is that, for example, Chetan is working in the some robotics platform. Has this Python is a open source? It's a open source language. So what happens? Like Chetan, there are many other guys who are working on the different platforms. So take image processing, take robotics, take uh, embedded systems. So these guys, what they do is it's open source. Whatever the functionalities they design with respect to their platform, they will contribute those functions to the Python actually. Okay. Yeah. So till now, so whatever the packages you design, like your open source guy is, so they will contribute to the PYPI. It's a Python package indexing. Okay. 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 Yeah, certain standards are there. You can push your code. Maintaining that standards, you can push the code to the this PYPI. So your code will be reviewed by the set of guys and they can approve that. Once they approve, your code will be in the Python PYPY website. Okay? Okay. So what happens still no, mostly it, there are around 80,000 plus libraries supports are there in Python. Are almost all the platforms. Okay. okay. So you know whenever they are working on, they no need to do anything from the scratch level activities because they already some functionalities are available. They're supposed to use that. That's it. Okay. 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 Next is it supports all the databases. Means I can say all the RDBMS. Okay. So RDBMS stands for Relational Databases Management System. Okay. Okay. Whichever okay. the RDBMSs are available in the market, Python supports all of them. Okay. Oh, okay. It supports all the kind of databases, but inbuilt. Python, when you install, there will be a database inbuilt called SQLite. Yeah. The current version is 3. So, in the market, SQLite is one of the databases they are rapidly using in the market because you know the mobile market, how it is mobile apps designing. Yeah. yeah. So, in mobile, whatever the mobile we have, so there is a database inside that is called SQLite 3 only. SQLite only. Okay. Whatever the mobile uh, database is, which is no mobile carrying is, the database is called as a SQLite. Okay, the same thing which is carried out by the Python also. If you don't want that, whatever the user, for example, if you want to interact with the MySQL, then you're supposed to explicitly install that okay. on your machine. Okay? okay, but if you don't want that, if you want to interact with the SQLite, this is already a built in available when you install the Python itself. Okay, so user no need to go explicit installation for SQLite as well. Okay, uh, so far? yeah. Yeah. Likewise, it suppose there are many advantages for there. So you can design, for example, UI or UA level activities using the Python. Okay. Okay. UA in something I call as a standalone applications. Okay. You can call this as a standalone applications. Uh, something like. Okay. So GUI in the sense web designing, right? Okay. So in order to design the website using taking the support of Python, you have to go for some other framework called Zango. Yeah. Okay. okay. So take support of the Zango, you can design the web applications mostly. Okay. Okay. Coming to the standalone application, see whenever you observe or whenever you're playing with the Windows system, you will like install some softwares, right? Yeah. Whenever you're installing some software, some when a .exe file, when you click on that, you'll open some terminals, right? Some boxes. Mm -hmm. So those boxes generally called as a standalone applications or desktop applications. Okay. Okay. So you can design such kind of activities using the 
Python. So for standalone applications, what it does is that it is having the internal T Tinker module is available. It's a package available built in in the Python actually. Okay. Okay. So using this module, I can design the standalone applications. But for UI level activities, what I have to do, I suppose to go for the Django. Okay. 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 Next is there are many kinds of things. There are many flavors are there. So these five are the most important things. The other important thing is this. Generally, most of the people will. This is the be, uh, best interactive way. Uh, generally, Python usually called as the interactive. Actually, my keyboard is not good. Sorry. Uh, interactive programming language. What is the interactive? Um. So you can easily understand, you can easily write a normal words, like you know. Right. Like so you, you have the real time experience. For new, on your experience, what I said is that. So Karun, you can also understand in the. You can you can also understand that. So here, whenever you install the Python C, there will be a ID. Okay. Is my screen is visible to you? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. So when you install that, there will be ID actually. Okay. Okay. So when you click on this ID. See, this will be open like this. So whenever you're supposed to observe these kind of symbols like three, right? Okay. This is called as a interpreter. Okay. Okay. This symbol, whenever okay. you observe here on your machine at, at any point in time, this is called as an interpreter. So what happens here? For example, I given some piece of code to you. I given some piece of sum of two numbers code to the Chetan and Karun. Now your responsibility is to debug what exactly that function is doing on. Okay. So what okay. you do, you whatever the code I have given to you, you can copy that code, paste it here, and observe the functionality of that fun function. Okay. Okay. So okay. directly for the end user, Python has given an opportunity that you can directly interact with the interpreter here. Okay. 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 Means see here, some of the two numbers, for example, this is the way. Don't bother about the concept here. Means don't bother about the syntax. Take the concept here. So this is the usual way you do design using the functions in Python. So okay. what are you supposed to call here? You can call the argument something like this. It will give the result to you. But if I given this piece of code some to you, what is the way that you can just call this function here, paste the code here, and execute that? Then you can know what exactly the things happening here. If I given some large program, it's something composed of some ten to lines. What you will do? Take that entire program, in internally that just print to have a print statements. What what is x? What is y? Okay. Okay. What happens here? What is the way you can debug that? Just print it up and observe the behavior. Okay. 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 So here, see one thing you have to learn here. What happens here is that Python has given the opportunity to the end user that use this is ideal for debugging the things. Okay. User can supposed to interact with the interpreter directly. So that is the reason this language usually called as a interpreted interactive programming language. Okay. Okay. So it is usually called as a interpreted. You know the interpreted. Explain what exactly the interpreted stands here. Yeah. So whenever anyone came to you and asking, hey guys, can you please define the Python means? You can simply define that it's a interpreted interactive programming language. Okay. 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 And also, what is the I mean to say, why they are in the market, most of the people preferring the Python is, it is the best object-oriented programming language which satisfies all the principles of OOPS. Okay. Okay. Okay? Because the basic funda, whenever you're supposed to learn the Python is, in Python, anything and everything is an object. Okay. Okay? So in Java, if you take Java, suppose some people used to call as Java is not a 100% object-oriented programming language. Okay. But here, because in Java, they are to, for they are, uh, for primitive data types, there is a int is there, there is an integer class is there. Two are there. They support two. But here, int is not taken as an object or a class. Okay. But here, integer is a class in Python in Java. 
Okay. Do you got the thing difference? Generally in Python, for primitive data type called int, in Java 3 versions, Java 3 below versions, they're supposed to take this int as a not as an object. Okay. But here, later on, this is a disadvantage for the Java actually because it's not satisfying the OOPS principles. According to the OOPS, what it defines is that whatever the application designed by the end user, that in that application, anything should be in the form of classes and objects only. So then only that language or application should call as it is completely designed with the OOPS. Karan, getting, are you getting? Yes, sir. Okay, so whatever the language, whenever, see the reason behind when I gave it to you on language, how do you suppose to call that language as oops? You will check whether all the funda means all the objects are which are taking in the form of objects and classes or not. Whatever the variables you declare, whatever the function you declare, whatever the class you declare. So everything should be object here. Okay. If you found anything, any variable or function or class is not taking as an object, then that language is not called as an object-oriented programming language. Okay. okay? So okay. that is the reason most of the people say Java is not a 100% object-oriented programming language. Okay. But in the market, Ruby and Rails is the best language which is uh, satisfying the principles of OOPS completely. Okay. Are you clear so far? Yeah. So you got something about the difference between the programming and scripting. Next is the scripting languages. What exactly the history behind that and what is the importance of Python? Right? Yeah. Okay. Now we will get to the usages. Can I erase this? Yes. Right. Coming to the usages. See, where exactly this is using here in the market. First thing, so Python is getting utilized in the product-based companies mostly. Okay? Because, for example, you both guys have some organization, so your organization is something manufacturing the CPUs, for example. Okay? Okay. So for test for testing your CPUs, there will there will not be any customized tool available in the market. So you know cannot buy any tool and test it by your test it your product. So what they will do? So you are supposed to design one framework to test your application or product. So what you will do here? You will design some. What is that? Framework. So what is this generally the framework? What are the piece of functionalities you want to test on your product? You will design set of functions. Okay? Okay. Are you both the both the guys are getting on? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you sleeping or else? No, no. <laughs> no, no, right? Right. Yeah. So right. So generally see, this is very important because you should know where exactly after learning the Python, where exactly you have to apply those things. Okay. So product-based companies generally what they do, they will compose a framework. So what is this framework? Framework is nothing but a, it's a collection of functions with respect to their product. Okay. Okay. So in order to de design this kind of framework, they uh, prefer Python. Okay. 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 So they prefer here, not only Python, they prefer Perl also. So till two years back, they preferred Perl as the best approach for designing the frameworks. You can observe in any MNC company, if they are designed some framework level activities, they prefer Perl because they already started this work five to six years back. Okay. But recently, before two years back, whichever the organization is started or initiate, they want to initiate some framework development, they are preferring the Python. Okay. Okay. Okay? okay. Right. So this is one of where Python is utilized more in the product based companies. The next is what? Web application designing. Okay? Out of these generally to design the website usually they prefer the HTML, CSS, JavaScript. These are available actually. Using this they are supposed to design the websites. Later on the approach come to the PHP. So okay. before two years back most of the people started using the PHP for designing their web application. But since two years back 
So what the market changes is that the complete market is now dependent on the Zango framework. Okay. Zango. Why they are preferring to the Zango here is that, see Python itself I said, when you design some application in Java it takes 1000 lines, when you design the same thing using Python it takes 100 to 200 lines of code. The same thing here, Zango also reduces the stuff, means you have to design some website, that website should be designed within the days, four, 3 to 4 days, you have some target like that. Okay. Okay. So usually when you take the PHP or HTML, usually that takes at least one week of time to design one website. Okay. Okay. But using Zango, if you're clearly well aware, well aware about what exactly the functionality is available in the Zango, you can design the website within two to three days. Okay. Even one day is more than enough to do the one website designing. Because here, Zango framework is something like a MVT based framework, model view templating. What the okay. most of the functionalities that provided by the Zango is reusability. Okay. Reusability means something like it has the property of inheritance. Means, for example, Chetan has developed one website, Karun has developed another website, but you both, for example, Chetan has already started working on the web designing. Now, after one week, Karun supports the web designing. So what happens here is that now uh, Karun want to have some kind of designing level activities which are similar to the Chetan. Okay. For example, my first page. So Chetan first page and current first page both should be equal. What happens? Chetan already done the, some coding on the first page. So what current do? Current will not do again scratch level like which is like designing again from the starting level. So he just use that code of the Chetan. Yeah, got it. Using level will not, which, which is not available in the other languages like PHP or HTML most. Okay. So what current do? Just he will inherit your code. Okay. So that it makes the work fast for him. So you know, you no need to take care for the first page again. He can start yeah. using okay. the second code, second page yeah. designing level activities. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's something like there are many kind of features it provided actually. So that is where so whenever any constraint has to be there in the web designing level activities, they prefer Django there for okay. the faster level application designing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so this is the way the market they are using because to learn to work with the Django Python is must. Okay. Because okay. this Django framework is completely designed using the Python. There's a reason without Python you can't do anything with the Django. Okay. Okay. Right? And the other uh, uh, other platforms. So what, where is the other things is that they are mostly using in the other platforms. Recently I observed that in the market they are using Python for the big data. Okay. Okay. Mostly. Okay. okay. And other platforms also has directly the Chetan has worked on the robotics. Robotics. If you take anything, whatever you take, all the platforms it is applicable because it is having the library support in other platforms also. Okay. Is it clear so far? Yes. Okay. No, this is the history. I explained you the history and I explained you the what about the scripting languages and I explained you the features of Python. Now I want to go to the technical. So with respect to the technical, so Chetan, you are already worked on the Python, right? Yeah. So rather than explaining some content in the basic level, just ask me what's one topic so that I can give some information on that particular topic to you. So that makes more sense to you, right? So you can judge whether the technical content you are getting in the proper way or not from me. I think it's okay. You can just go ahead. Uh, okay. So are you people familiar with the OOPS? Yeah, object oriented programming, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So what about the current? Yes, sir. Okay. Don't call me yeah. sir. Okay. Call me Vamshi. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. Right. So people, I don't want to give some basic stuff, variable declaration in Python because you people are already aware about that. But I'll give you the best approach in Python with respect to the OOPS. Okay. Okay. See here, screen is visible. Yes. Yeah. Right. So I will give you some ten minutes of OOPS principle. Okay. Okay. What exactly the OOPS stands for? Okay. okay. Right. So here, uh, what I said here is that see. Um, 
before going to that, do you have any reason behind, for example, most of the people say that the language should be in the object. Why only object? Why not Bomshi or some other? Do you know the reason behind that? Um, I didn't got your question. Why? Most of the people say that every language should satisfy the oops, but oops is saying that anything should be existed in the form of object. Why only object? Why not something? The question makes sense, right? Yeah. Yes. What? Have you understand my question, right? Before? <laughs> okay. So you were saying that like a why only it's an object, not anything other, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Because like, in the object is like a, it's predefined. Like a, you can just like put the object. I mean like a something and you can get the output and it's easy. You don't have to like go through it every time through the code. Mm -hmm. Means you're talking with respect to the inheritance? Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. Those are called as the properties because they have assigned some properties called abstraction, encapsulation, polymorphism for the object level. So what is the importance of taking in the object level this? No issues, I will tell you, okay? Okay. So it's a modular. My keyboard is not working properly. Okay. Next is oops. Okay. So coming to the programming languages era, what happened here is that in the 1970s there used to be a structure is something like there is going something like it's a structured, unstructured, modular level and oops. Okay. okay. Coming to the structural and unstructural, that those point in terms of languages like Pascal and C, Turbo. So these kind of categories are coming under the structure and unstructured. What happens here is that, for example, I am designing some application called Road Dash game. Road Dash, do you know? Road Dash in the sense it's a bike race game. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. It's a bike okay. Okay? <laughs> Something like it's a bike race. <laughs> so now Chetan and Karun has developed some application for bike race okay. in the 1970s. So what you will do in the road rash game, so the bike used to really go in the forward direction. In the opposite direction, you will face some obstacles. The obstacles may be the car or rickshaw or cycle or auto, some other objects, right? Okay. Okay. So what you will do, you will write the piece of code something like this, that the bike is moving forward, right? Yeah. Next is what uh, the car is, uh, car is getting the opposite direction. Like something. The other the other is object is also for example <coughs> cycle is getting in the opposite direction. Okay? So whatever you do, whatever the piece of code you will do, something like this, right? Okay. Okay? Think about that you are in nineteen seventies. There is no oops, there is no function, there is no class. Okay. Okay? So whatever the piece of code you will do, you will you will do the something like uh, a bike is moving in the forward, car is getting in the opposite direction, cycle is getting in the opposite direction. So whatever the piece of code you will do, you will write step by step. Okay. 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 So now, whoever the client that project has given to you, that client came to you and asking, hey guys, please can you please remove core, uh, what is it, core object from this game? Okay. Okay, just remove the obstacle car from my game application, whatever that you have designed. Now the guy, whatever the Chetan and Karun, what you're supposed to do, you will remove this. When you remove this, the code will be executed, right? Yeah. Is it will be executed when you simply remove the code? Because see here, if I remove something here, that will impact on the existing application, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes or no? Yes. Because here I was writing step by step. Everything is linked with the previous one. Yes. Because there is no kind of uh, concept called function here. Whatever I do, I will do the piece of code in the step by step approach. Here, what happens here is that whatever the application you design, that is not loosely coupled. It is tightly coupled. Okay. Okay. Means, if you do some modifications on this, they definitely impact the existed code. So at this point in time, designing some application like this based on the client requirements, it's very tough job. 
Okay. Because structure and structure, there is no concept of function like. Whatever you do, something like everything is a tightly coupled. Okay. okay. These are the actually these are the problems that we faced at, uh, that the most of the developers has faced while designing in application level activities during the phase of structured and unstructured. So later that is the reason they came across with the modular level programming. So what module in the sense? What do you de define? What do you think module in the sense? So module in the sense it's a function. Okay. Okay, so what you will do, you will write one function for the bike, okay, one function for the car, and one function for the, what do you say, take any objects, one cycle. Like this, for every obstacle, you will design certain functions separately. Okay? okay. After designing certain things on every obstacle, you will define a main.py file. In this py file, what you will do, you will use these functions and make the proper code. Okay. Okay. Now the client okay. came to you and asking, guys, can you please remove the cycle obstacle from this game? Now what you will do, you will do these modifications in the main.py file only, right? Yeah. Okay. So what you will do, just remove this function and use only these two and code the application. So compared to the previous state in the structured or unstructured, modular levels give some kind of flexibility, right? You no need to do modification from the entire application. Just remove this function and just record the these two. Record with these two within the main file. Okay. Okay. Do you got the concept, Karun and Chetan? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right? Compared to the previous state, this is somewhere it is something like it is loosely coupled. So that is one of the reasons and also you need to only modify the main.py file because there are already functions available, just you want to use them. Okay? okay. okay. So this makes to some extent that developers can design based on the client requirements, but not completely, right? Okay. Later on they came across with the oops. What oops is saying that anything should be existed in the form of classes on objects. Why object here? My question. Right? So at this point in time, 1970s or something, you have some pen, for example, to make pen or CPU, whatever the object. Take any object in this world and try to design some application on that. Okay? Okay. okay. So for the pen, if you want to design some application in the 1970s or 1980s, so what you is what is the job you want to do here? You want to design some application. Or any object that you have taken from this world. Okay. So at this point in time, it's very, I mean, it's a, uh, something that developers can't design the applications on the any object like pen. Okay. So what they do in order to avoid these obstacles, what they do, so Oops came into the existence and saying to the developer that, hey developer, consider anything in this world as an object first. Okay. okay. Consider that as an object. So here developer assumes that pen is an object. So now what OOPS is defining is that for every object generally there are two kinds of things. One is the property. The other is its behavior. Okay? Okay. Okay? So take any object. But for any object generally these two will be there. What is that? First will be the property, the other is the behavior. behavior. Take any object like pen or pencil, whatever you take, CPU or monitor take. So for that, there will be a property, there will be a behavior. So what exactly the property, under the classification of properties, what exactly they will come, what is the length of the pen? What is the color of the pen? What is the company which has been designed by this? What is the breadth of this pen? Okay, do you got that? Do you got it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So these are the general properties, right, for the pen object. Coming to the behavior, what is the behavior here? What can I define for this? This is for pen is for? Writing. Writing. Yeah. Okay. So this is the way the developers, means the OOPS has given support to the developers that take, whenever you're taking any application designing on this object, Whatever the object you take from this world, for that object generally there will be property and the behavior. So based on the property and the behavior of the particular object, 
define the application. Now simply what I will do, I will design the application, I will design a class called pen. Okay. Within that pen, I will design the applications for length. I will design the application for writing. Right? Okay. So I can design the application something like this by considering the pen as object. Okay. Are you clear so far? Yes. Yeah. Have you got the reason behind why to take as an object only? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it makes the job easy for the developers. So consider anything, whatever you take, anything considered as an object. For that object, there will be a property, there will be a behavior for that. With respect to the properties and behavior, just design the application on the particular object. Okay. Got it? And uh, what about, about, this is something similar to the modular only, because function oriented. What exactly the other kind of things is that code reusability. So for that reason, what it is going, it is giving the concept called inheritance. Polymorphism means how to provide the, means how to make one function utilize as a multiple forms. Polymorphism. Next, for the security level, abstraction. Okay, so these are the properties which are available by the, oops, there are many things are there, I'm just giving the few things. Yeah. Okay. How to encapsulate the object. Okay. So there are okay. many things out of which these are the one of the few important properties or features of the oops. Okay. Okay. You got that clear? Now what is the reason yeah. behind taking everything as an object here? Yeah. yeah. Right. Now I will explain you the best approach to learn OOPS in Python. Okay? Okay. Because as Python has given the best interactive interpreter for us, we can check what exactly the back end of Python is working also. Okay? Right. Okay. Coming to the class here, I had defined a class called car. So before going to the class example, I have to explain you the concept of, oops, uh, what I will do is that. Mm. So this is, I am an architect, assume that I am an architect, hmm? okay? okay? No, what happens here is that you both guys came to me, okay? okay. So here, this is me. Assume that this is me, I am an architect. Now you both guys came to me. Okay? Chetan and Karun. Karun, are you getting right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay? Please ask yeah. me, okay? Okay. Now, so here Vamshi is there, Vamshi is an architect. Chetan and Karun is there. So here, as I am an architect, I am designing my building plan actually. Okay. okay? So this is my building plan. Assume that this is my building plan. Okay, I have some building plan here. So what happens here is that I have designed some template for my building plan. So now you both guys came to me and asking, hey Vamshi, can you please provide your template that you are using for your building plan so that we will use that and we will construct our building. Okay. Okay, so you, you both the guys came to me and copied my plan actually. Okay. Okay, so you both guys copied my plan here. Okay, no Chetan and Karan, whatever I, I supposed to do, the changes will be impacted on you, right? Yeah. yeah. Here, I am an architect. You both guys came to me and asked me template and copied my entire building plan that you are following for your construction, building construction, okay? Okay. Okay? So whatever the modifications I do, that will be impacted on you, right? Yes. Yeah. Because in my building plan, if I am doing something else, because if I change something, you also inherit that, right? Yeah. Yeah. You both guys also will get, because you are copying my plan. Yeah. Okay? Now consider this Omshi as a class. Okay? Consider Omshi as a class here. 
and take Chetan as a object. For example, I will take C1 and uh, Karun as a C2. Okay? Okay. okay. Means consider Vamsi as a class and uh, consider Chetan as a one object C1 and uh, Karun as another object C2. Okay. 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 Now what I do is that, see, I will define whoop stands only on these two properties. First, so here, whatever class have, <coughs> can I say like this? Whatever class yeah. have that will be inherited to the object. Okay. Whatever the billing plan I have here, that you will inherit, right? Yeah. Yeah. I do some modifications, you also get impacted with that modification because you are following exactly me. Yeah. Clear? Yeah. Is there any confusion? No. No. Right? Can I say it like this, right? Whatever the class have, that will be inherited to the object. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if Chetan came to me, uh, what Chetan is something is that he bought two cars. So he's in order to do have the car parking, he he have changed his billing plan actually. Okay. Okay. Now if Chetan has say, done some modifications on his building plan, does this impact me? No. No. Does this impact Karun? No. Right. So for this something I can define like this, right? Mm. Every object is independent to each other. Can I define like this, right? Yeah. Okay? So, first thing yeah. is that what I'm saying, what are the class, what are the modifications I do in this building plan that will be inherited to both the guys. So, from this what I define, what are the class have that will be inherited to the objects. Next, yeah, okay. if Chetan has done some modifications that does not impact me, that does not impact on the other object. So, whatever I think is that every object is independent to each other. So, does this make sense to you, right? Reason? The reason yeah. behind, can I, call, can I define like this, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay? Now, we can observe the practical things. So, exactly the OOPS completely is working on these two things only. If you know these two things, then everything will be clear in the OOPS. Okay. So, we can see the practical approach. Okay? Okay. Can you go forward? Yeah. 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 Thank you. So, I have designed a class called car. Okay? What I'm doing here is that I just do some pass, something like a stub. If I don't want to any piece of code, you can use the pass there. And see, I have designed a class car. See, when you print that car, car is a variable which is of type class at this particular object location. Okay. Okay. Whenever you print any object, you will get some object, right? See, what you hear it is doing. Car is a variable which is referencing towards this object location. Okay. Clear? Yeah. Okay. So what I'm doing here, I'm creating two objects here. If you don't know the object creation, I will explain you. For now, just take the concept. Okay. 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 So C1 and C2 are there. No, C1 and C2 are the objects for the class car. Okay? Okay. Just like assume that I am a car. This is the car. C1 mm -hmm. and C2 are the objects with respect to the car. Okay. Now what happens here? So I am defining some property called price to the car. Okay. Car okay. is an object, you know that, right? For the objects I can define the properties. Yeah. 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 Yes. So I can yeah. design like car price, my it's my own wish. I can design what car dot company is equal to something. So here car is an object, it's my wish that I can give any kind of attribute for the object car. Okay. Car is a class, right? Car is a class, yes. yes. Yeah. yeah, but you said car is an object, I guess. Okay, C1 so is generally, C1 is an object. we used to yeah. call classes and objects as similar actually. Okay, let's observe, let's go forward and you can get the difference between them. Okay? Okay. Here, uh, class okay. is, a, here car is a class here. For that class, okay. I have defined some property called price. Okay. As per our first definition, see what happens here, whatever the class have that have, that will be inherited to the object. So when yeah. I define some property to the car, so as per our first definition, it should be inherited to the object also, right? Yeah. yeah. 
see what happens. I have not defined any particular price attribute for C1. C1. But when I do some modification, when I do some assignment for the, it's sorry, it's C2 dot price. Yeah. Yeah. So our first definition satisfies, right? Yeah. Okay. Take any attribute. Take some car dot uh, some company is equal to Honda. So if you define some Honda here, what happens here that C1 also, C2 also inherits that yeah. property or attribute. Now, okay. So we practically observe the first def first one. Coming to the second one. So here C1 is something like a Chetan. Now Chetan here, what I have done is that Chetan has changed his price, for example. Let us assume that mm, he has changed some price with respect to his wish. Okay? okay. Now if I print C1 dot price, whether it will be something 2, 3, something or else, something it will be 4, 3 or so which mm -hmm. is that? It should be the price. Okay? Yeah. So if Shetan has modified his car price, does this impact on the car? If I print car dot price, you know what it will give me? It's four three. Does this impact on the C two? No. What is the C two dot price here? Four three. Four, three. Four, three. Right. Yeah. So if Shetan has done some modifications on his object, then this does not impact the class or any other object because. Objects are independent to each other. That is the reason behind that. Okay. Do you got the concept? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I can explain you in depth also how exactly the method is working. See, one thing I can get the give the assurance from my end that from my sessions I will give you the how exactly the back end works. Okay. Okay. Okay, even with the classes also, why? what is the reason behind that is that if I give some the core part of the Python, then you can overload that or you can reuse that functionality. Okay. Okay, so I can explain you how exactly the object creating is also. So we can, for example, stop that object creation for any class also. Okay? Mm -hmm. You got the concept here. See, yeah. the one more important thing is that whoever the guys who are learning the Python, they don't know the basic funda actually. So whenever you declare any variable, this you must learn actually. This is very important and most of the people will not concentrate on this here. So if I give i is equal to 100 now, if I print i, what happens? Okay. i is no 100. So yeah. here, user no need to specify what data type he is storing on, right? Yeah. yeah. So Python is generally called as a dynamic typing language because in other languages take C or Java or whatever, if the user is supposed to store some i is equal to 1000, he should specify what data type he is storing on. Yeah. yeah. Then it allocates the memory with respect to that. But in the Python you are not doing anything. So when you do something i is equal to 1000, what exactly happens at the back end is it will check the type of i. This is at the back end. What exactly the process go is that it will check the type of i, so whether it getting string or int, it observe. So it is int. What it will do is that it allocates the memory with respect to that size. What you specify. Okay. In Java, we have to define first. Okay. In Java, you have to suppose okay. to do. Suppose yeah, to do. Yeah. So whenever yeah. the user gives, based on that only, the memory allocation will be done. Yeah. Okay. But here, everything is a dynamic. It is a runtime. It creates and allocates the memory. Okay. And the other concept you have to get here is that when I go i is equal to 1000 here, okay. Now if the same variable, now what happens here is that i is a variable which is pointing towards the 1000 location, 10,000. Yeah. So yeah. Python has provided as a function called id. Using this function, you can retrieve the object location where exactly this 10,000 is been placed on your hard disk. Okay, store. This okay. is the object location for your variable. Yeah. Okay, the okay. concept behind is that most of the people don't know this concept here is when I do the same thing now, hello, um, i is equal to, now I define the Chetan. Previously I stored i is equal to 10,000, now I define i is equal to Chetan. Okay, the problem okay. is whenever the guys with some other programming background, they believe that i is a variable which is storing 10,000. Okay. okay. They believe that variable is something which stores a value, but in Python you should not define like that. 
in python variables are something which is referencing towards this object location now here what i can define i is a variable which is referencing towards this object location okay 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 so before going to the concept see i is equal to i given 10000 now um, what happens is that i will give you current is equal to i okay i stored i is equal to 10000 now what i define is that current is equal to i defined here current is a variable i assigned current with i means here what happens see when i check the object locations of current and object locations of i what happened same same thing object locations are same right yeah okay so what happens now both current variable and i are referencing towards the same object location okay, okay. so that that is the reason i can access that 10000 using current or i variable okay in detail we can example i will define some some function here so don't bother about the def definition okay take the concept behind here uh, for example x plus y so generally i define the function what is the way i can i used to call some like this right Okay. Take the concept. Don't take the syntaxes. I will tell in the further classes. Take the concept. I have a function called sum. I call that sum function. It gives me 3 comma 5 pass. It gives me the 8. Now my intention is observe here. If I give Chetan is equal to sum. Okay. So what exactly here sum? Sum is a variable. Here this sum is a variable which is referencing towards this location. This object location. Okay. Okay. Now, if I print Chetan, observe the difference. Chetan is also a sum function. It's of sum function at this same object location. Yeah. Right? So, generally, okay. to access the sum function, I have to suppose to call like this only. Now, what I have done to the same object location, I made this Chetan variable pointing towards that. Now, I can access that function using the Chetan variable also. See? Okay. This makes sense that in Python, anything and everything is an object, right? Yeah. yeah. And most of the people don't know this concept because most of the people will come from the other programming background. What they believe is that in that language is, okay, variable is something which stores a value. But in Python, variable is something which is referencing towards the object location. This is, this is the difference you should know. Most of the people, they will learn the Python, they will not get this concept actually. Okay. This is how exactly the difference usually occurs with respect to the variables mostly. Okay. Do you got it? Yeah. Okay. This is the actually this is the very fund actually. How exactly the object difference is going on? Okay. Is it clear so far? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is the thing because I have another session, so I have to close up, wind up this session here. So if you want require another session, I can give the technical session on another demo class okay okay so are you clear so far right yeah yeah okay see so if you if you still can't judge me I will take another session technical session for you okay okay so there is no issues but what one thing is that with respect to the I will send the schedule I will send the syllabus sheet for you okay, okay? okay. so it's my responsibility that I can give you the assurance that whatever the session you will take from me at the end you will design to some extent. That too you have to practice. Okay. 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 With respect to the basic funda, because I will concentrate only on the fundamentals. If you are strong on the fundamentals, that in the advanced part you can work for you using that. By taking the help of the basic funda, you can enhance your skills. Okay. Okay. What I believe is that that is so your fundamental should be strong. Okay. 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 So get the syllabus observe that if you require any other additional topics just let me know okay, okay? because I have covered all the things and what is the other kind of uh, uh, kind of enhancements you will get from me is that I will explain you the core part of Python okay okay, okay? that's your wish first I will get the concept basic concept to be covered after that if you are in a capable to learn the advanced things or core part then I will let you know that based on your interest levels because I don't want to confuse you with the core part. If I give the core part, you will confuse with the basic part. Okay. Okay. So if you are in a capable to that to get the information on the advanced part.
cut out code part. I can explain you that too, actually. Okay. Okay. And coming to the material, I suppose to give in the form of PPTs. Okay. I don't believe that okay. Python, which can be enclosed in small book and that can be given to you. So an ocean. So for that, the best documentation for Python is its website. Okay. okay. On the website, if you go there, so on the website here, <laughs> so here you can observe the documentation session. Okay? On this documentation yeah. session, you can observe two flavors. If you're working with two series, go to the two. If you're working with three, go to the three. So in this, you can get the, all the materials which you want. This is the best approach for getting the helps help. I mean to say, help documentation from the Python website. But what I intend to do is that I will provide you the content in the form of PPTs for you, so that you can place that in your mobiles, right? Yeah. So whenever you're supposed to go for any interview session, that makes easy for you. You can have a quick glance on your mobile, right? So it takes around 10 to 15. To, uh, it's maybe 20 to 20 minutes. It takes you 20 minutes to recap the things which you have learned before. Okay. So that is the reason I will provide you in the form of PPTs for you, the material, okay? Yeah. With the rest of the part, that is that gives you the basic funda. Means it gives the basic things how to use. What is the okay. theory behind that? Just give the single line theory and example with respect to that. Okay. 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 And in advance, if you want to go, if you, and in future, if you want to go for some kind of advanced level activities, you can get the information from this level, like from this documentation. Okay. 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 And at last of the class, I will show you. I cannot give the code to you. I will show you some frameworks of MNC companies which I worked previously. Okay. That gives you some kind of awareness that what is the real-time production rates going on. Real. Okay. Is it clear? Yeah. So after one week of the classes, we can start automating your daily activities. Means you can start automate your Facebook, Twitter, Gmail activity. Okay. okay. I said okay. right, uh, some kind of UI level designing, right? Maybe you, you will not find that information in the syllabus sheet. So recently I added the topic your T thinker also. So using that you can design your standalone applications. Okay. Means you can design some kind of desktop applications for sending the emails. Okay. 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 So after one week okay. you can start automating these kind of things. So which makes you some uh, giving the more confidence and interest towards learning the Python. Okay. okay. Okay, so is there any other kind of uh, queries do you have or any concerns from your end? No. No. So, when is the next class? Coming? Don't hesitate, you can ask me the private information, any personal information also. Means something like where exactly I can utilize this, where are the opportunities I can get best. Mm -hmm. If you have any other queries also, please let me know, no issues at all. To my extent, I can give the best to you. Okay, so when is the next class going to be? Tomorrow? Uh, if you get, if you are accepted me, then I can schedule for you. Actually, is it is this proper time? Is your advice feasible to you? Whatever the time yeah. I have taken, six yeah, to seven, yeah. because uh, at seven twenty I have the big data classes. I have to take the big data. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so time, I am yeah. free. I am absolutely free for the six to seven. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Okay. Is that fine to you? Okay. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. So coming to the duration, see actually I, I was a corporate trainer for Tech Mahindra. Okay. Okay. The, what I believe is that uh, it's something it can be, I mean to say it can be completed in a short span. But what I do is that with respect to your frequency, I will go to what extent you are delivering taking the things. Okay. okay. It's not uh, something okay. like it's not a constraint that I will complete that in two or three weeks. Let's base uh, the time advisable is three weeks. Let let us think to what extent we will go. Okay. That based on the uh, frequency we used to do, okay? To what extent we are increasing the level of understanding, okay? Okay. okay. So generally it's advisable for two to two and a half weeks to three weeks. So let us see if you have some, we're doing some activities, then we can extend that to that based on your understandability. At final, once the session is done, you should be confident with respect to the Python. That is what my intention here. Okay. Okay. okay? How, how so take the syllabus on? sheet, observe it, it carefully. If you want any modules, just let me know, okay? Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, is there any other other kind of you know, information do you want? Yeah, Vamsi, how is the job market for Python? See, one thing. Uh, yeah. Currently, the complete market is on per. Okay. 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 So, from the last two years, the Python utilization has started. 
Okay. Okay. But okay. after two years, Python is the one which placed it in the market first. Okay. See, recently we got the information that right? Infosys and some IBM or uh, some other TCS, I think, they lost many projects due to the lack of resources on Python. At Grand Prairie Ford, it's zero down okay. all month long. Okay. okay, because very few members are available in the market till now. Now we don't get the importance of learning this. After two years, you will feel pretty confident and happy that I have learned at the right time. Okay. See, currently they are opportunities are available, but when I compare with the Java, it is not huge like that. Okay. But after two years, definitely this will be the market. Okay. Already in the US, they already started implementing everything in the Python only. Yeah. But in India, it takes so pace, right? It takes some time to get onto that. Yeah. Okay. But in future, now only you can observe that in most of the job openings, Python has become the one of the mandatory skill. Yeah, I've seen some. Take job any job. opening, take any job opening, they will place Python as a skill in the skill profile. They should know. Okay. Okay. But after two years, okay. definitely in the market, it is utilized 80% in the market when compared to the. Uh, even it is beating out the other languages after two years, it is something like where Java, whatever the Java is doing, everything can be done using the Python also. And the people are preferring Python mostly for the application level designing also. And recently in the market, the openings have started on the big data also using Python. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Is there another issues? The other kind of openings you can, you can find on the web designing. Okay. Okay, but most of the MNC companies who are having the hardware kind of designing level activities, so they prefer to design their framework using the Python. And most of the companies already started migrating their framework from Perl to the Python. Okay. 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 Is the information is uh, fine to you, or else you yeah, want yeah. some more information? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Clear. Yeah. Don't hesitate. Be free. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, be cool because you are learning, so you, so you should know whatever things you should supposed to do in future. Okay, okay. Yeah. fully speaking, okay. that currently you have the openings, definitely you have the openings, but I can't say it is something like a Java, Java openings, okay. huge openings. Okay. But in future, definitely, because you can observe, I don't know whether you are reading the technical articles with respect to the US or not, the market is completely shifting to the Python in the next upcoming years. Okay. Because okay. you know, I said, it is very easy to learn, easy to implement. Yeah. yeah. That makes the people to Google, migrate to the Python as well. Clear? I hope you got the things. Okay? Please let me know if you are not getting any point in time with our don't hesitate to ask me the questions at any point. Just ask me, interrupt me and ask me the questions with respect to the topic which I was dis discussing with you. Okay? Okay. Okay. See whatever we discussed with the oops that makes easy, right? Because yeah, at the initial yeah. period when I was learning the Java, it is a hectic for situation for me that how exactly the OOPS is working in Java because I don't have a interpreter like interface in Java, right? Yeah. So here Python is provided as an IDE so that you can check your code. Whatever you feel confused or mess up with some piece of code, just copy that, paste it in the interpreter and observe the behavior, how exactly it performs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here yeah. it's a something like it's very interactive. You can learn what is the step-by-step -step functionality in your piece of code it is doing on. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 Clear so far? Yeah. So that's from my end. So I have, it's time running out. So I have to catch up the another batch. Okay. 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 So you can interact with the Mahesh, I think. Okay. Okay. And okay. contact them and just let me know your opinion. Okay. Okay. Yes. Right. Nice talking with you guys. Okay. Thank you. Alright. Yeah, thank you. Bye. 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 Have a good night. Bye. Bye.